Welcome back. Uh, so last week when I did my Amber Spyglass, well, my His Dark Materi Materials uh, review, um, I told you that I would be reviewing Lies of Lockamore this week. And so, here I am. Lies of Lockamore. It's by Scott Lynch. It's book one in a series called The Gentleman Bastards, which I just love. And when you find out why they're called The Gentleman Bastards, um, it just adds to the to the love. Um, um, usually in, in my reviews, I have a segment where um, I say bad things about the book or you know, things I didn't like, things that weren't personally to my pay, taste, things that may have taken away from the overall experience for me. Um, I, ha I have no such complaints for the lives of Lachlan Moore. Um, this book, I, I love everything about this book. I spend a lot of time looking for new books. Um, I have two pages of series that I need to read, but I keep going looking for more books anyway. Um, uh, and in just about every thread, Lives of Lachlamora inevitably comes up. Um, I wasn't, when it, when it first came up and people were talking about it, I wasn't actually that intrigued by, by the synopsis on the back. Um, this book is, it, it's basically about a gang of thieves and some trouble that they get themselves into, just to very shortly sum, summarize it for you. But, uh, so the synopsis didn't really do it for me until after I started reading the book. And then, now I read it, I'm like, how did that not intrigue me? But it didn't, so I'm just warning you ahead of time. Um, um, in this book, there are, there's pirates, there's a Ocean's Eleven type heist. There's a couple of them, actually. Um, because they're, I mean, they're thieves. But they, they steal because they like to steal, not because they need the money, or they don't even really know what to do with the money, they even say. Um, there's Ocean's Eleven type heist. There's a Count of Monte Cristo type heist, or not type heist, sorry, type revenge plot that, uh, isn't even executed by the Gentleman Bastards. It's by someone else that they get caught up in. There's a, so there's the Count of Monte Cristo, and then there's just bloody, like, carry revenge plot that goes on about halfway through the book. Um, it starts out pretty straightforward, and it gets really dark. Um, uh, like I said, there, there are, there are pirates, there's the heists, there, there's, you know, rebellion, there's coups, there's shark fighting, Olympic style shark fighting. It's, I mean, this book has, this book has everything. This book is amazing. The cursing is, is just beautiful. I'd love to hear how Scott Lynch talks in real life, because, I mean, it, it's, it sounds natural. Um, you know, sometimes you read a book and there's cussing that's kind of like, oh, yeah, that doesn't really seem natural, that doesn't really seem to belong there. It's a thing of beauty. There, there's even, I think probably one of my favorite parts of the book is, um, so every other chapter is a, um, like, flashback. There's, it, for, like, the first half, three quarters, it's a flashback to Locke, who is the main character, Locke Lamora. It, it's a flashback to Locke when he was six, and, and then growing up into the man you follow in, in the main thing, how he learned to be a thieves, the places he studied, and that type of thing. Um, or it follows his friends, and then later on you get you get more background in the city. I think my favorite flashback chapter is only a couple of pages, and they're talking about how um, uh, the first revolution before the Kappa Barsavi, who is Kappa's um, like rule groups of gangs, and then the Kappa Barsavi came in, and he took all of them. He he got rid of the other Kappas, and he's like all of all of the gangs of Kamor and the thieving gangs all belong to me. Um, and it says, 50 years before Capo Barsavi came on, <coughs> the, there was the first revolution in the crime world. And it was some prostitutes got tired of how they were being treated by their pimps. Um, go figure. Uh, they, so they, 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 they rise up and they kill their pimps. So one group does it and then other groups get inspired. And so um, the Kappas of the different gangs, because like I said, it's before Barsavi took over, um, the Kappas keep sending more people to try and sort it out, put the put the 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 prostitutes in their place. So the the prostitutes gather up and they gather up and they keep killing these people that are being sent because they're like, we're doing all the work, you don't get all the money for it, essentially. And um, so they they stage the first revolution is is prostitutes who who then you know set up their own houses. Um, but one of my my favorite lines is basically, and the men found out. Uh, it's difficult to be intimidating when one woman has uh, your uh, cock in her mouth and the other has a stiletto in your side. I was like, yes, that's so awesome. I love that. That's so cool. I, I mean, the point of the chapter is that the women um, of Comor should not be underestimated, which becomes important. But I mean, this, the, it's, it's a great, great book. The characters are really well-rounded. Um, the things that they do are are super awesome. There were a couple of times that I, I set down the book 
because something happened and I just like slow clap in my living room because it was uh, some of the things that they do are so brilliant and so you don't see them coming but they're so smart uh, you, you kind of get why why they're the best thieving gang and most underestimated thieving gang in all of Kamor and then there are other times there's one time specifically when it gets really bloody really fast it's really dark and really bloody really fast um, and you know it, you, it, it makes sense why it happened but it's still like like shocking and so I set my book down and I'm just staring out my window and it's dark I can't see anything but I'm just staring at my window and my boyfriend is playing Skyrim next to me and he pauses and he looks over and is like are you okay? And I'm like yeah he's like you look like you're in shock or something and I said this book is fucked up and he laughed at me and I had to say it like three or four more times because it I was so in shock from what had just happened like it wasn't out of nowhere it wasn't just doing it because because it, it, because the author wanted a twist or something, I mean, it made sense, and it was what it was building towards, and this isn't even halfway through the book yet, by the way, um, but it was just still like, oh my god, what the fuck just happened? It's, it's, it's an amazing book, and the city, I mean, even without the characters, the city, and the history behind the city, and how he, he sets up the rest of his series, um, with, with the characters and with the world that this is taking place is just gorgeous. I mean, world building is, I mean, it's, it's a tedious process as a writer. World building is not easy, and it's, it's even more difficult to make it interesting to, to your readers. Um, in some cases, depending on how you do it, and he does it as those characters are moving through it as opposed to, you know, like, seeing part of a city, this is, then this is what happened in this city, and the next part, and this is what happened in the city, you know, 100 years ago, which is setting up next. He, I mean, he does it just brilliantly, and, I mean, the characters are, are amazing. Uh, pick up this book, lots of twists and turns, some you, you think you'll see coming, some, like, you'll see coming in hindsight, it's like, oh yeah, obviously this is gonna happen, and some that just come out of nowhere, um, but it, it, you don't get whiplash from it. It never, it never feels forced. It never feels like he, he's writing twists and turns for the sake of writing twists and turns. It all feels natural. It is an amazing book, and it doesn't end on a cliffhanger. So if you, if you can only pick it up and you can't pick up the other two that are currently out, um, number four of the series is coming out. It's supposedly November, and number five is on the start. I'm not how, sure how long the series is going to be, but this one does not end on a cliffhanger. So at least pick this one up. It's absolutely amazing. Go to Amazon.com if you're still not sold. Um, you can read however much their sample is. They have one of the look inside features for this book. Um, if you have an ebook, have a sample sent, or just buy it because it, I mean it's it's absolutely fantastic. The writing is beautiful. I never felt like I was reading. I was always lost in the world. I was always seeing everything vividly. Uh, it's just beautiful. Pick it up. You won't regret it. it it's amazing. And I, I, like I said, I can't say too, too many good things about this book. It's just brilliant. Um, so that's Lies of Lakamora. I would love to say that next week, um, my review would be Red Seas Under Red Skies, which is number two of The Gentleman Bastards. But I order, I send in my order for like five or six books on Thursday. It's now Sunday. And Amazon hasn't even shipped them yet. So who knows when they're going to get here. So I won't get to continue The Gentleman Bastards, um, for... Uh, at least another week. So next week, my my book will be um, the blade itself, which is which is in the same threads often mentioned with Lies of Lakomora. It's usually um, spoken about a little less passionately, but people still seem to love it. The same people who love Lies of Lakomora. This is book one of a series called The First Law. It's a trilogy. So this will be next week's review and. Hope you enjoy it. I hope you pick up Lies of Lakomora. If you don't pick up Lies of Lakomora, I do hope you find some good books to read, and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye!